and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so, we're taping weather. this on weather. <laughs> it's been really nice. It's going to be cooler this weekend. I'm going camping. It's going to be nice. I'm happy for that. Um, political weather. So, we taped this on Tuesday. Donald Trump's coming on Thursday. Fair warning. I'm leaving town. Carla's not going to be here. Um, you... I, I see this not just with this event. I saw people complaining about the Cigna road race. Here's the thing, folks. The President of the United States will be at SNU Arena on Thursday. I would just avoid the area completely. You're not going to be able to go up and down some streets, but people will still be shocked. I don't know what's going on. I mean, sign up for the alerts on the Manchester City website, although they haven't sent one saying... I don't think I've seen a Nixle saying you should avoid that area. Right. Um, uh, unless, of course, you're coming to the you're rally coming to, or if, if you're, you're coming, coming to, to protest rally, or here, all of that good First here, Amendment So here's stuff. my inside tip. Park someplace else and take an Uber. Oh, that's probably just, smart. Just don't try to park near there. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, I just don't be surprised that the president's going to be here. And then Joe Biden's people are protesting the president being here and oh, whatever. There's just going to be a lot of people. And if you're not going to the rally, just... Don't go. Yeah, and I mean, you know, on the one hand, we kind of pretend like, oh, it's such a big deal. But like, if it was a big Cirque du Soleil right, right. or a ice hockey game right. or something, we'd be like, eh, it's going to be some traffic downtown. Right. We can manage and there's it. There's been a lot the of questions from a lot of that, people because so. people automatically jump to conclusions about why is Trump going to get a bill for the for the extra cost? Okay, no. Here's how the rule is: if Secret Service protection is provided for whoever is visiting the city also provides police for that regardless regardless of, of what party, party we've done it for obama, obama we did it for george mm -hmm. w but you know like this is just how it works when clinton get if you get secret service protection and you come to visit manchester the manchester police will assist and they don't bill you now will who knows if trump gets a bill for like any added non-security thing I, I don't know he's the president are, like are you not. going i haven't decided yet okay <laughs> I'm one of those last uh, people. Honestly, I'm pretty glad I'm I out have, of town. I, I have access to tickets. And, you know, I, I, we'll see. I have a, I have another appointment that afternoon, so I might not be able to fit both in. Okay. And I don't know if I can want to do the, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i not a big fan of being cram anymore, being crammed into huge crowds of people and screaming and yelling. Ah, you know, it's fun, but I don't know if I want to do it. And I'm worried about, like, how long people are going to be waiting in line. And, you know, I get fussy. I mean, I read stuff where people said they oh, were people coming are be in the night, up the night before. before. It'll be crazy. And... I should drive by in the morning and then, like, try to take some video because it will be crazy. I mean, I do feel like when um, it must have been with the last elections there was something at SNU and I just happened I think I was meeting someone for drinks or you know, something like, like I wasn't there at all for that in particular yep. and I remember it being like oh what's wrong with traffic right. kind of on granite but it That's, didn't seem that bad no, either no. so I'm well, sure and like, you, like I said there's only so much parking in that area so there's only so much ca car congestion there could be I mean, you know, when, when I've been in those little motorcades and whatnot, when when the president or the vice president or whoever shows up, I mean, they block, you know, they'll come out of the airport and all those ramps onto the highway get blocked and all that good stuff. Yeah, gets those are definitely the moments where I do not feel like we live in some kind of egalitarian <laughs> metocracy because I'm like, really? You well, know, I think this be the royal chariot. No, I think it's all, I mean, I, I it does have that impression, but. Part of it is just security so that some crazy person doesn't, like, jump on the car of the president. You know, regardless of who the, which party or whatever, because people are nuts. Yeah. We go with that. Okay. So what speaking I Speaking of crazy speaking people. Speaking of crazy people, no. <laughs> uh, first, we'll talk about not crazy, and then we'll, we'll, we'll slide right into totally crazy. So thank you, Governor Sununu. Um, this past week, I think it was on Friday, he vetoed five bills. Um, three were anti-Second Amendment um, bills. One was a, a minimum wage. I don't even remember what the dollar amount was. I think it was 13 I think it was up 11. to 11. Wasn't it up to 12? It was a lot, for something like that. 20, and the, the fifth one was um, redistricting. So let's tackle redistricting first. Um, the way things, we have redistricting every so many years. Um, we redistrict the Senate, dis the New Hampshire Senate districts, the House districts, the federal districts. So we can, you know, decide that. CD1 goes here and CD2 goes there. Um, those things are decided by the legislators. It is just like everything else. The, le the people who are elected to do this 
do this. Um, you know, a few years back when we redistricted and created all these terrible floatarial districts, I was in office. I didn't vote for it. I Maybe I saw how bad it would be, but I just didn't think it was going to be good for Manchester. Um, and politically, it wasn't good for Manchester. It might have been great for some towns, you know, if that was the goal, but for Manchester. And it's just created, I think, a lot of confusion for voters. Um, so we'll, t if we're going to do that again, which I presume they're going to probably un- They'll do away with most of the floaterials because I've heard that from people who work for oh, the Secretary of State. So, I didn't know yeah, that. I think it's probably become problematic. I just don't think I don't think the goal of the floaterial to provide the best representation actually did that. I think it just made people very, very confused. But we'll see. Um, so he vetoed they, there was a bill that was gonna say we're gonna have this separate unelected commission. Yeah. decide redistricting. And it's like, well, that's not how this works. There, there seems to be a push uh, just in general. I to mean, have I've other seen, entities uh, do yeah, things. Yeah, and I think part of that is, as we see, you know, government's too big. No one can really do their job yeah. well. There are way too many laws, yeah. all that stuff I always talk about. And so there's this desire to create these commissions. And certainly, like, uh, with Right to Know New yeah. Hampshire, yeah. nonpartisan coalition just wants open and transparent right. government, they pushed for a Right to Know commission right. where we would, you know, have 13 people and they would look at things and say, you can't redact this, that makes sense, and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had, honestly, yeah. similar concerns, right? Because right. The second you create this commission, they're not elected. Right. Who are they, Who are they accountable, accountable right. to? And it's fine to say, well, it's going to work good because we're going to get the right people in but there. Who's going to determine but, who but the right people? But how, how do you decide that if it's right. not the voters right. deciding and, and, who the right person is? And there's nothing to say is. that a group of people who want to, uh, you know, address redistricting can't get together, form a organization and then lobby the legislature look we came up with this plan we think this is the fairest plan for the people in new hampshire and then lobby hard to get that passed right you know you can do the legwork but if you really want to cast a vote on it you got to run for office and get paid a hundred dollars a year and that's the way it goes so that was one bill that um governor sununu vetoed um then there was the minimum wage bill which I have always been opposed to a minimum wage. When I was first elected, I don't know how many years ago, I voted, um, I remember Carol, I think it was Carol McGuire that had a bill that took away New Hampshire's minimum wage. That doesn't mean we don't have one, we just follow the federal one. And the reasoning for that made lots of sense. Every time the federal minimum wage changed, we had to put in an amendment to make it match. It was like housework yeah like just don't if we're just following the minimum wage we don't need a law that says we follow the minimum wage because that is the law right um this in all my years when i served in the state house you know people come forward and they have these great ideas about the minimum wage and who they're going to help and who it's going to hurt and all this stuff and it's really just i'm really starting to think that it's just um, it's a wedge issue. That's it is all a wedge it issue, is. and it's just to get people angry yes. at the people who don't want to raise the minimum wage. So, um, because just to you know put it all in context, less than three percent of Americans nationwide earn the minimum wage. And Those, if it's three percent nationally, then I bet it's it, I half think a in, percent. I here. think it's less than it's around one yep. percent in New Hampshire. It's really and small. It's a really small amount, and to sort of put that in context, you know, like I would say. I'm definitely a libertarian-leaning yeah. Republican, yeah. right? So I look at, at libertarian politics, and I'm like, there are way, in terms of numbers, more libertarians than, than there, there are, are people <laughs> who earn the minimum wage. Right. So I'm like, why can't I hear free market economics right. on NPR? Right. Why can't I hear some of these ideas that we have in places? I was like, you know, if you want actually a fair system, then I, I'd be like, there should be a law. Every time you mention minimum wage, you have to mention free market That's economics. Right. Well, and I, I um, you know, in governor, he, the governor releases a, a memo when he vetoes things saying why. And he said, you know, well, among other things, New Hampshire has among the highest wages in the country. So, and ironically, I thought I had printed out this chart. I found this really cool color chart, and I like visuals. <laughs> and it showed um, income, and it showed uh, sales tax and income tax, all these different color bars and where, where you know, New Hampshire is. And we're up there. We are in the, the upper part of, uh, as far as states go. And unfortunately, the way all the numbers always do, they're always based on median income, which means there's just as many people making more as there is less. So that's not really... That's not what people think. People think median is average. average. 
so there's a, you know, there's a lot more people making below the median than there are above because, well, no. No. There's a lot more people making below the average because when you take the bigger dollars and factor, but so that number is never really clear. Um, but it, when I was looking for information, what I found was an article um, about Seattle. And there's a lot of things wrong with Seattle. I have a friend, very good friend, who visits, visits Seattle and tells me all these horror stories about just how really bad it's gotten out there. Um, but they raised, the city of Seattle raised their minimum wage to $13 an hour. And as a result, um, there were 3.5 million fewer hours per Work. quarter worked. Um, average On average, the low-wage earners made $125 less per month than they did before the minimum wage was put in place. So the people that it's supposedly helping, it's actually hurting. Well, th that, and, and I mean, the data is out there. I don't really understand why we still have to debate these things because it's like, Factually speaking, the data is out there yep. that says, you know, it, it will hurt the people we're trying to help. Yep. And it actually, with the restaurants, restaurants and stuff, I mean, restaurants actually where, started closing. Yep. I was going to say, not that I would vote for increasing the minimum wage, but you know what? If somebody put in a bill that said we're going to increase the regular hour min hourly minimum wage slightly and we're going to completely not impact the tipped earners, that would have a better chance of passing because every one of these minimum wage bills hurt the restaurant interest industry, which in New Hampshire is huge. We're a tourist state, like yep. it or not. We are a tourist state. Why we're would not people a like it? That we're, creates an no, incentive I mean, for us to take care we're not of a, our nature. We're not a manufacturing we're, state. No. So we're talking, These this dialogue is about other states and Walmarts in other states not paying enough money or whatever. It's not New Hampshire. And and that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's a core thing for me, of course, is that New Hampshire is this unique yeah. place that isn't like the other states. And we don't want it to be like the right. other states. That's what's cool about it And when he's out of state, and to be honest, it is. It's out of state organizations that come in. I mean, that's where. I mean, that's the same the, thing with the gun laws. The gun laws. laws. Those are all out of state organizations and Bloomberg funded stuff and whatnot that come into New Hampshire and say, well, look at all these things that are happening in other places, so you need to change your laws. Look at how people in manufacturing plants in the South aren't making enough money, so you need to raise your minimum wage. None of them look at, what, do people make minimum wage in New Hampshire? Because guess what? They don't. Right. So, And that's why, like, the 10th Amendment and states' rights is actually so important. I think people forget that the, the actual vision for America was that we were going to have all these competing different states. And that, um, no, I'm ready to go because I <laughs> she, thought of she, she wrote a Ninth Amendment. And I was like, no, it's definitely no, the it 10th. No, it is. It's 10th. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, but, what was I thinking about? But, but you know, so, so the idea was that we would have these different places. And we all know that competition is actually something that, that uh, works and drives people towards betterment right because right. it's like you know like if i'm on a diet and she's on a diet and she loses more weight right, then one week than a, me then an i'm incentive. like motivated and incentivized to to go and try harder and so the 50 states were supposed to be like that and i think if you look across the board there are probably a handful of states i mean for me i look at income tax there are yeah. a handful probably three i think or four states left that don't have a personal in state Florida income and tax place, I, I think one of the dakotas no, maybe, i was gonna say someplace and, up in the north and i think maybe like New Mexico or like so, there's yeah. you know so there's one sort of in each region and for the most part those will be the powerhouse of that region so again the question becomes why right and, and the <laughs> answers are there this is how economics works right and so you know when I see I saw all the the people come in with the the gun rights stuff right <laughs> so New Hampshire Maine and Vermont are the safest states right in America, they are also the states with the freest gun laws. We have constitutional carry, people can conceal carry, you don't need licenses. So why? You know, people go, why? And I'm like, because no one takes a chance here because right. you, you're gonna you get might get right. shot. Well, I was talking to somebody just yesterday um, and he was saying um, how he carries, except for when he's at work because he's not allowed by law to carry 
while he's at work, which is really stupid because he's in a type of job that I would think I would feel better if he was caring. Um, but he, he says, you know, he carries all the time when he's not at work. And he was in the grocery store and, you know, he happened to must have picked something on the top shelf and his, his gun was exposed. He said, and this lady behind him gave him like a rash of crap. Um, why are you carrying a gun? Why do you feel the need to carry a gun? And he was like, well, why do you feel the need to ask me? Like, because I have the, I can. And if somebody bursts into this grocery store right now and starts shooting, I bet you'll be happy if I can shoot him before he shoots you. You know, and there is it. Like, well, I think there's also this, this sort of level of hysteria has just, it's, it's like a virus that's invaded people's brains yeah. and no one's really thinking no, step rationally breathing. about the issue anymore because for me and and i'm sure people you know have heard this argument but a gun is a tool right, right? like anything else so if you think by banning guns we're going to solve the problem of these shootings it's it's not actually those two things don't follow so it's it's like saying if we banned forks Fat people, people would, would right, get skinny. Right. They just use the spoon. It's it's like, well, I think the problem isn't the guns. I mean, we may quibble on whether, I mean, it, may, it makes killing more people faster, easier. But I've seen cases in, in uh, New Zealand, I think there was one, and there was one in Norway and possibly Japan, where there were like mass stabbings. Well, even just, <laughs> just stabbing in general. So I'm reading in the paper this morning that somebody got stabbed over on Wilson Street or something, and over a dog barking or something, and I'm thinking, thinking so let me understand this there was an irrational person who something got elevated and they stabbed somebody but where is that out where are why aren't people equally as outraged right I mean, let's ban knives, like knives. Let's not you ban know like forks you know it's so, just let's ban cars because you know people, if we're really that concerned, and some people actually run people down i mean we've had that happen in the new hampshire in the last few years where some woman was out charged out on the seacoast for running down some people intentionally so, so while all of this sounds scary and maybe you're yeah. sitting at home going, well, yeah, we should just like, like ban bad bad life, you know, <laughs> the point is like, you know, don't get swept up in, in these groups of people who are trying to manipulate you. Think about like your everyday life and your everyday life in New Hampshire is safe. Right. And it's safe in part because we have a responsible yep. cit citizenry who are still willing to carry yep. or conceal carry. And these laws, I understand they sound well intentioned. I saw a photograph, you know, when they had the press conference yeah. last week. Right. So they're bringing in all these little children. Yes. So one, you're being manipulated. Yeah. You're being given a visual cue that's supposed to make your heart melt and bleed. And yes, it does all of those things. Yeah. Little kid with a sign that says, I don't, don't want me. to, you know, I don't want to hunker. What am I learning in school? How to hunker down, how to run zigzag, how to. And it's like, but do you understand, little kiddo? Writing the words, you know, gun-free zone. Is what's causing the, us to the, have to those, have. Those signs are in the schools of every school shooting. Yeah. Putting those words up and banning the guns is not what's going to solve the problem. So let's look at the root causes right. of the problem. And possibly treating kids in school like it's a prison might be a little part <laughs> of the problem. <laughs> Terrifying kids with these right. kinds of things. Right, I mean, because it is. You you, you do hear young, sometimes some younger people say things that you're like, but that you know there's no law. That's not how this works. But that's not what they're taught. Um, so Governor Sununo did veto all three of the anti-Second Amendment. His, bill, his summary was, these three bills would not solve our national issues, nor would they prevent evil individuals from doing harm, but they would further restrict the constitutional rights of law-abiding New Hampshire citizens. Thank you, Governor Sununu. Yeah, um, I, I think it was the right call. And the thing also people need to remember with these red flag laws, we are talking about laws that are being written that have zero due process. Right. I mean, these are laws these are, that are saying, hey, you know what, if I don't like you, neighbor, I can just, you know, go right. lodge a complaint and then the police are going to show up and confiscate your guns. Right. And, you know, there, there's just people throw the word common sense around a lot. And I'm like, on the face of it, not one of those laws are common sense. No. And, and going back to like the out of state, and this happens all the time on both sides. I get it. But so I'm reading this article from uh, Inside Sources and Michael Graham's writing about why the Sununu, um, why the gun vetoes are a win for Sununu, and he goes into length about that. But it is kind of funny because this goes back to the same thing. 
Senator Cory Booker and former Representative Beto O'Rourke, you know, tried to nationalize by denouncing the veto. Okay, but you don't live in New Hampshire. You have no idea what it's like to live in New Hampshire. Maybe where you're from, they need you need some kind of you know different laws. These well, are but the, but t- the New Hampshire people. People don't seem to. Can, I can someone from the left needs to answer this question for me? Why in the places that have the strictest gun control is there more cr- Do you have the most shoot. gun crime? If someone can answer that well, Carla, question that's not to a, me. That's not a fair question. Um, so the Democrats in New Hampshire, I read this this morning, are also launching this new attack against Governor Sununu. Now, just to clarify, Governor Sununu is rated the third most popular governor in the country, and he's got a 65% approval, re- approval number. I don't see that ever that changing. I don't think it's going to go down. If anything, I think it'll probably go up. Um, he vetoed the budget because the budget raised taxes, despite what the Democrats say. They'll say it didn't increase taxes. But when the tax rate on January 1st is lower than the tax rate would have been when they pa- if the bill oh, it raised that it by, raises taxes and it it's raised on it by 12.5 yeah. percent and it was on the budget. businesses and the 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 messaging it the, this and it g- wasn't just on businesses, no but i'm but. just saying but the businesses you know that was one specific tax the business profits tax was going to increase if the budget passed and they there's this scare language corporate entities and outside money and out of state you know, corporations, and they try to make it sound like, oh, yeah, we should tax them. Except for the reality is 95% of the businesses in New Hampshire are based in New Hampshire. And when we say we're going to tax those out-of-state corporate entities, you're also taxing the your local friends, gas station your and your plumber and the ice cream shop and the grocery stores. Not the ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> so please don't tax the ice cream shops out of business. So... You know, Governor Sunun is trying to be responsible. And, you know, it's not really right when the Democrats are actually misleading people on what they're actually doing. But now they'd like to, they're going to do this lawn sign campaign that says, for sale to cor- corporate donors, Chris Sununu. And they're talking about how he's beholden to powerful special interests in corporate donors, which is just kind of funny. Because I think in the last week or so, I think I read an article or read something somewhere about Maggie Hassan being at this big fundraiser at the Rhode Island mansions. Well, last I checked, Rhode Island is not in New Hampshire. So the same party that is trying to go after Chris Sununu for I don't know what, has their own people having out-of-state fundraisers at man- mansions where I'm sure corporate entities are attending. It's just, the, it's hypocrisy. I mean, the thing is, if you actually take, and this is why, you know, I'm wearing my little libertarian hat for a moment, you know, you look at both sides and I'm just like, it's such nonsense. I wish we could just stop all well, of it because any Democrat with a straight face who says, you know, for sale by corporate interests, I'm like, I will go look at your donor sheet. Right. Folks. And I bet, and because you, know, I'm right, you guess, have, you probably have donors. half the yes. same donors. Yes. I bet you Eversource probably donates to yes. all right. politicians and at they, that And, level. you know, the Democrats get money from the, the labor unions you know, and, and okay the, the nra might not give money to too many but they do give money to some democrats but okay oh no and and so you know that idea and once again new hampshire is unique yeah we're different and i think it's kind of insulting I, I, as a voter not as you know that someone who's running for office or anything i'm getting really frustrated at the narrative from both sides yeah. quite frankly because it's kind of fluff it's kind of, but it's also, it's it's sort of nonsense. It's trivial. Can we talk trivial. about, can we can we talk talk about, about pensions? Actual can issues? we talk about things? Oh, you mean the unfunded yeah. liabilities that will destroy this state <laughs> in the next 10 years uh, if we don't do something about it? Yeah. Like, we can all pretend these they, things don't but exist. But if we don't actually try to tackle them, nothing. So I do want to, since I did write down Ninth Amendment, yes. and you're probably like, what the hell is she talking about? I am. So <laughs> I read an article, and I laughed because I was like, this is what's wrong with the world. Um... There was an article about um, some farmer's market or some farm, and I don't remember, New Hampshire-based farm that has a license or is permitted to sell raw milk, can also take raw milk and make it into yogurt and frozen yogurt, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Um, So they took their raw milk and they added sugar and they churned it and they made it into ice cream. And some other farm ratted them out and said that you can't do that. And the, the state farm people, whoever, went and went to them and said, well, because it's not spelled out in the things you can do with raw milk, you can't do it. And I'm thinking, that's not how this works. The Ninth Amendment of the United States Constitution guarantees that the government 
Anything that we don't have a law about is not illegal. So the woman was funny because she had the far, she said the guy from the state was actually nice and everything, but she said, okay, so let me understand this. I can sell raw milk and I can make it into yogurt and I can sell, she, but I can't turn it and make it into frozen raw milk. And he said, yes. And she says, can I make it into frozen? Can I take the yogurt and freeze it? And he said, yes. And she goes, now explain to me why I can do one and not the other. And he said, well, because it's spelled out in the law. And she was like, yeah, no. So then it was funny, though, because then some people said, well, we should add ice cream to. No, stop adding to the list. If it doesn't say it's illegal to sell ice cream, then it's not illegal. It's, it's, it, my, my level of frustration, which I'm sure everyone can tell, I'm just like, you know, the 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 dummery of <laughs> everything is just driving me insane and the these days and because the that same thing happened with people I know who wanted to start a fermentary. Right, and you can't and, ferment and, and, pears and or whatever it is. This, no, the state was like, well, kombucha isn't on a list of things that are legal. Uh, Therefore, so kombucha is suddenly illegal in New Hampshire if you like, want to make it yourself. And it's like, I, what? So what if I so, want to make something? But you can make kombucha so, at home. So, so we're putting... You know, we're like, oh, we must help the poor. We must help the poor, which we absolutely must do. I get it, right? But we're not going to let people make kombucha or make ice cream or make, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, do you think these things might have things to do with each other? Maybe if we let people do things, we would have less poor people. It's just crazy. Totally crazy. <laughs> So Thursday. So I want fermented ice cream. <laughs> fermented from raw fr milk. From raw milk. Right? I don't know. I, With I, bacon in it. Right. Why not? <laughs> raw bacon. No. Like, no. <laughs> um, so Thursday's going to be crazy in case I didn't mention that enough earlier. But um, also on Thursday, if you're not at the Trump rally, which this will add to the confusion downtown. So don't forget, we have Farmer's Market from six or 3 to 6.30 in Stanton Plaza, which is right in front of the Doubletree Hilton. Um then at 7 o'clock at night, August 15th, celebrating Woodstock 50, a Woodstock tribute band. Oh, wow. So you'll have that whole crowd doing that. Um, so Thursday would be a little crazy It's going to be like the Clash of the Hippies. Yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah. be great. I'm so, so and, glad yeah, I'm not The Biden people can go across the street and be hippies together. I don't know. Um, but that's all we got. Um, if you have any ideas for... Um, show content or questions about anything we have to say, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Carl has been really good about uploading the YouTube videos because I'm a real slacker. Um, so they're all out there. If you miss our show and you want to re-watch re it, you can find them either on Facebook or on YouTube. And we're always open for suggestions and comments. So that's all I got. Good weather. You're away for a week. Have yep. a wonderful trip to Thank South you. Carolina. And I'll be back next week with someone. I don't know. <laughs> and that's all I got. Peace Bye. out.